Marathon will be back in action this Sunday with tens of thousands of competitors taking to the streets of the city. Among them, our own Brona Tumulty. It's the first time she's ever attempted something like this, and she's doing it for a very special reason. Ah, County Monaghan, the land of lace making and little hills, and home to this guy, Cal Donahue. He and his wife Lil had five children. My mum stayed in Ireland and had my brother and I. While three of her four brothers moved here to Chicago and had ten kids between them. Now I'm here as well, but that's a much longer story. Earlier this year, I threw my name in the lottery for the Chicago Marathon, and somehow that's the only thing I won this year. My inspiration is Cal. He ran four of them back in the 80s, and after he passed away following a stroke, and then I came to Illinois, and I'm like, it's so flat. I knew if I ever checked 26.2 miles off my bucket list, it would be for the right charity. We are a volunteer-led organization. And that's where SEAL comes in. Tell me what SEO stands for, first yep. of all, and what kind of work you guys do. Yeah, so SEO actually stands for Stroke Survivors Empowering Each Other. So it's a, a stroke support group is one way to look at it, and I know they felt helpless. That's Randy Crabtree, who's the current president Just of the organization. A lot of people, when they think stroke, they think someone older, and there are a lot of indivi individuals at a younger age that have stroke. And he knows firsthand what a stroke can do. So when I had my stroke, actually February 6th of 2014, I was 51 years old at the time. I just won a fitness contest, so I was in uh, very good shape. Thankfully, he was standing next to his brother when it happened. He looked at me across the back of the car. I looked at him. He said, are you OK? I said, no. My left side's going numb. My speech is slurred. I'm having a stroke. Get me to the hospital. So you knew instantly? And I knew instantly only because I was educated on the signs of stroke. Because unfortunately, my grandmother had had a stroke um, eight months before and passed away from the stroke. And so we all learned about stroke from her experience. And knowing the signs is half the battle. FAST is an acronym to recognize a stroke and then what do you do after it. And the F is face, one side of somebody's face drooping. That's a sign. A is for arms. If you hold your arms up and one will drop or one won't go up, sign someone's having a stroke. S is for speech. Is someone's speech slurred? Another sign that they're having a stroke. And T is for time. Biggest tool you have in your toolbox is time. Call 911, get that person to the hospital. Even if you're not sure it's a stroke, you get them to the hospital immediately. Even with the second stroke four days after the first, that speed helped prevent Randy from physical disability. My biggest thing was mentally for about four or five years, just getting past the questions we talked about, the how, the why, is it gonna happen again? And, and that haunts you for a while. But after leaving the hospital initially, he understandably had 10 million questions. I just was not getting the answers that I personally needed until I found CO. And CO was unbelievable. Randy says members of the board personally showed up to talk with him after he reached out. He then went through the group's Survivor to Survivor program, which is run in conjunction with local hospitals, connecting new stroke survivors with those who've previously suffered one. We've actually recently teamed up with the American Stroke Association, big organization, and the goal is to bring this national now. CEO also runs a learning group for younger people because stroke can strike anyone. This group has people as young as 16 in it. Um, you know, the average age is probably in the 20s. And in a few weeks, a new venture will kick off connecting survivors with occupational therapy students at North Central College in Naperville. One of the biggest things we found that stroke survivors need is rehab. One of the very first things to run out of money is rehab. Because of everything they do, I felt they were the right charity, in spite of my own nerves. I just hope I can cross the finish line. That's my like biggest fear, that I won't be able to do it. So what we do is we support people. We'll carry you across the finish line. So, so. I, I, might need, I might need to take you up on that. Every dollar raised goes directly to survivors and their caregivers, which often end up being loved ones. That'll help us expand the rehabilitation program. That'll help us expand the survivor to survivor program. That'll help us come up with new 
identify new areas of st what stroke survivor need. And that is what we are so good at, is identifying what a stroke survivor needs. And with each mile of this race, I'll also be remembering all of the friends, brothers, sisters, parents, and grandparents who may no longer be here, but whose memories never leave us. Oh, little Brona. Wow. Well, if you'd like to donate and help Brona cross the finish line, you can find that fundraising link on all of our social media pages. Break a leg, Brona. Cheering her <laughs> own. Going to follow her on that app, too. You can also find it under the story as well on our website, WGNTV.com. You can track the runners. It's really cool. I know. <laughs> You're going to do it, too.